Ready? In a minute. It's not locked yet. We're, <laughs> we're live. Hey, everybody. I'm Ed. And I'm Bar. And guess what? We're the, the streeters. streeters. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in tonight. It's the RDRV Glass Studio Channel live at 7 o'clock Monday night. Uh, today's the 11th of May already, Is Bar. it the 11th? Oh, my no. gosh. Is it really? I yeah. don't know. Oh, Are that's you crazy. sure about that? Okay. But hey, I hope we got a good show for, uh, for you tonight. And we hope that you have a good show for us. Let's get started with some of these questions. It's awesome. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Yes, thanks for tuning in. And what we'll do tonight, is we'll answer your questions. Um, just put them in the chat or in the comments. Um, if you're on Facebook, I think it's comments. If you're here, it's a chat. Um, and remember, Facebook runs 10 minutes a lag time on us. So Yeah. So, um, so welcome to us on Facebook, everybody. <laughs> yeah, and YouTube. So we're so glad to see you. And everyone's here. Rachel's here. Um, or I'm sorry, Rochelle is here. Kat St. Jane. Uh, Mark Mason's here. CM's here. Julie's here. Good to see you all. So hello, everybody. And uh, we'll wait a few minutes. Uh, um, Rochelle, we're really Rochelle's, sorry that you don't feel well. Yeah, that, I'm so sorry. I hope you get well real soon and have a speedy recovery. Speedy guys. recovery. Uh, I know how it is to be slowed down by illness oh it's not any fun no not at all sorry to hear that you're not feeling well but um and the other thing is uh rochelle if you could just clarify bad customer just okay. throw something in the chat and just clarify that for us julie so said it's five nine it's five nine it's not five eleven it's not <laughs> five nine all right well hey i'm two days <laughs> ahead that's good <laughs> I don't know what the date is. I, I don't mean. know either, but you know, I was just thinking, yeah, that's right, because we were at the doctor's this morning. Five, five nine. nine. And then I have another appointment next month. On the 16th. So yeah, that would so. be, guess what? Seven and <laughs> nine and seven, 16, everybody. Okay. Well, we'll overlook that you don't really know what know day the math it is. Today. You do know what day it is, though, right? It is Monday. It is. And it is 7 03 p.m. So. Okay. So, um, Rochelle. <clears throat> Rochelle has asked how you deal with a bad client. Ed. Well, Rochelle, that's what I, I want you to clarify down in the question box for us. Clarify just how bad they really are and or what happened. what is bad? Yeah, what happened? Do they not pay? Do they constantly badger rush you? you? <laughs> rush you? Are they in are, such a hurry that they can't see straight and it's going <laughs> to really mess you up. I mean, what is it? Because, Do they not like anything that you're doing? You know, yeah, there's all kinds of things. We have a yeah. few answers for you. We'll have and, a few. and, you know, everyone, not well, not probably not everyone, but everyone, every now and then you get that one customer that it's really difficult to make them happy. So in that case, while you're jotting all that down, in that case, just a rule of thumb, when you start a project, you have them sign off on the artwork, you get your 50% deposit up front. Then you do the artwork. You don't do the artwork until they pay you half I mean, of your you money. You can do a little sketch and yeah, give them an idea. Paper. Yeah. But don't do anything serious until you receive half of your money. Because your time is valuable. Unless you're going to, unless you're going to charge them an artist fee and to then, come up with the pattern first, because you, you can't take time out of your valuable time to draw a drawing and then them say, well, you know what? I don't really like that. Right. So I don't why? really like that, but can I have it to take it home? <laughs> and that would be a definite big no. and oh, no. You but, wanna, um, uh, but anyway, we'll be happy to work with you on that project. So what we like to do is we get everything in writing. We get um, the time frame. We tell them, okay, it's going to take this long for us to get the pattern ready. Then it's going to take this long to, then you're going to come in, you're going to pick out your colors and then have them sign off on everything. You know, get a timeline. Then they should just leave you alone and do your Until work. Until it's finished. That's right. And uh, and you, I guess you could tell them that. Just leave me alone. Let me work. <laughs> but don't. No, uh, you know, you're we, always going to get one of those clients. Sometimes the best thing to do is just give them their money back and set them free. Yeah, just write them a check because I'm going to tell you what, that grief is not worth that little bit of money. Your job should be your enjoyable. job should be enjoyable. So, you know, sometimes it's just better to let go and, and move on. And, you know, we're very fortunate because during my hip replacement surgery, uh, the month of February and, and part, well, really most of March, right, Barb? Yes. Most of March, 
our customers knew that I was going in for hip surgery and I was not going to do anything for at least 45 to 60 days. And you know what? All of them were very comfortable with that. And I thank them from the bottom of my heart for being so patient. And guess what? There's windows getting cranked out right now as we speak. Okay. So uh, thank you, Julie, for telling us what date it was. Yeah, appreciate that. <laughs> okay. And so there's more people here. Kathleen McCormick is here. And Kathleen, we are going to answer your question yep. for you. We've got uh, it. Coco is here. Um, Rochelle, I hope we answered your question. Uh, Christy is here. Uh, oh, Magali's here too. Hey. Uh, yeah, Magali. Is Magali here? Oh, Magali. Hi. I haven't got down that far yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the window in the background is the same window that was here last week. We changed it up with some different colors. And show them the different colors we can add to the window in the back. We can change the color in the back. There's a window behind. Do you like that? Window. Ooh. Ooh. This we is like, what we've been running on that window that everyone has liked for quite a while. And it kind of matches our background, but we thought we'd change it up and match my shirt tonight. So tonight <laughs> we're going, we're going loud and proud with purple to match Barbara's shirt. So this light actually, just to tell you a little bit about this light, I've been wanting one of these lights forever. And for my birthday last year, Barbara got this LED bar light for me. It's just a big bar. It's a, it's a 48 thing. inch bar. And you know what I and do it's with got it? It's a little LED controller. Yeah. <laughs> and it is so cool because when we go camping, I I'd, I'd put it under the motorhome and light the bottom of the motorhome up and just put it on fade. So during the evening while we're sitting outside camping, the color of the motorhome underneath of it is changing and it just really looks nice. And you know what it does for me? It makes me smile. And that makes me happy. Thank you, Barbara, for I, that I, wonderful birthday gift. Because <laughs> it still makes me smile. I know, I know. <clears throat> and so, um, have I, let me make sure I have everyone. He, the, said hello to everyone. Mark is here. CM is here. Julie's here. Julie Graves is here. Julie Bison is here. Kathleen McCormick is here. Coco's here. Rochelle, Christy, uh, Brenda is here. Brenda Craig. Hey. And Magali, of course, is here. Dr. Roy is here. Dr. Roy, I believe you're new uh, to the channel. And thank you for thank tuning you in. Thank you for tuning in. Thomas Sharp is here. Magali's here. And uh, let's see. Am I missing? Oh, Vicki G is here. James is here. James Smallridge, welcome back. And uh, yeah, disco party. Golly, I need a disco party. You know what? Well, we used to make back in the day when we first, we used to make uh, disco balls. We used to make mirror balls on Star Phone. So welcome, everyone. we got a nice crowd here tonight. And let's jump right in and get these questions answered. Uh, Kathleen is wondering, what is the largest size stained glass project I can make using only copper foil and no lead to reinforce it? Well... Do we want to just? Well, what we want to do is um, you're limited uh, square footage by the copper foil. But it, however, if you frame it in a wooden frame, I would say you could probably go as big as uh, maybe three by four. Um, and you don't have to add lead, but you just can't hang it Willie McNilly from the top. You're going to have to frame it in wood. I don't recommend hanging anything from zinc unless it's like, you know, maybe 12 inches by 12 inches. And that, that because a square foot of glass weighs about three and a half pounds, that would be okay. I don't recommend maybe, maybe 18 by 24 with a zinc frame. That might be, what do you think, Barb? That's probably about big as I would go. Put it in a wooden frame and make your work look even better by framing your work hanging it with screw eyes, S hooks and chain just makes a much prettier finished product for you and the customer. So how big say they had uh, a church window and they wanted to do it out of copper foil. Um, you, they would have to break that up into. Oh, you'd have to do that in uh, sections. Sections, and, four, four foot square sections. Uh, foot I would squares. say maybe 32 
tall, maybe. But it, I mean, square feet. Yeah, at the most nine square feet. Yeah. Nine square feet. Because okay. you're going to have to stack them on top of each other in order to, you know. But I, my suggestion is, is if you're going that big, just go ahead and switch over to lead and learn the caming process and learn how to watch our videos and learn how to apply reinforcing bar the correct way. And also learn how to use uh, your lead. And remember, everybody, you can mix lead and copper foil together and give yourself just that added attraction to the window. Thank you, Ed. Is that a good answer? Yeah. Kathleen, I hope that helped you out uh, because I was thinking about that as I was uh, reading your question. And uh, and we appreciate you sending that question in. It's, it's awesome. You, oh, one thing, a big high five to all of you out there in YouTube land, because we are now at 5,070 subscribers. And you know what? We couldn't do that without you. And we did make 5,000 last Monday evening, late, yeah, late in the night. Late Monday. But thank you so much. And that's a yeah. big from Barb and I both. Yeah, I think I posted that for you guys. It might have been the next day they said. Anyway, I posted it on the community page. I think they sent me a notice and uh, said we had reached that goal. And they gave us uh, super chats and super stickers. So you might see those on your page. Yeah, so uh, now you can uh, you can apply super chats and super stickers to our uh, to our page here. And that's awesome. So, I don't even know what that's about. I don't but either. I, but I if you do want to oh, make a super, donation through a super sticker, go ahead. Super th thanks. I don't know. I don't know. But I all of you deserve I just a super found out thanks. We had, yeah, super thanks. <laughs> Our super thanks goes out to you. Okay. So now we are, let's see. I got more people. I got more people. This is awesome. Thank you. All Diane Tour is from uh, Tucson. And I just want to say we've got people here from all over uh one uh dr roy is from mexico no is that right is that right did i say that right i hope so <laughs> oh gosh but anyway get a lot of people here i might have embarrassed myself okay thomas sharp uh has a question okay Magali has a question. Okay. If you don't want to put your window in a wooden frame what other material would you recommend well, then, I mean, you would, if it's small enough, again, you can use uh, like a three eighths uh, U shaped zinc that only bites an eighth of an inch around the window itself. And, but it gives you a nice profile. I, I just don't recommend hanging anything because, you, yes. you know, you can't use copper wire to solder to the zinc to hang your window on. So when you're hanging the zinc, you really should drill a hole through the zinc and use a safety wire and make sure uh, that when you're hanging it, you hang it on the sides, not from the top because that can pull apart. If you hang it from the side, then it's pulling on the whole window instead of just part of it. So, so we have a, is that a super chat? What medium and paint should I use to practice painting stained glass? To painting on glass. Thank you so much for that super chat. That's we appreciate awesome. that. You're the first <laughs> one the first ever. Super chat. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. What medium and paint should I use to practice painting stained glass? We use we use Roche paint. R O C H R O E C H E Roche. Some people pronounce it Ro Roche, but it's Roche. You can get the Roche paints um, from, what's the name of that? Well, I know Sunshine has a Magali. And no, uh, this is this is not Magali. This oh. is Migol. Migol. Oh. Hi. Um, you can use, <laughs> I would you. I would use the, the Roche paints um, even for practicing painting on glass because they, they only fire at like 925 degrees to 1150. And that's pretty much the range of all of their paints, except for the silver stains. They're going to need to be a little bit hotter, right? Yes. And so that's, I would say, just uh, find a supplier for the Roche paints. And uh, you can look on our website. And I've, Sunshine Glass uh, in Buffalo, New York has it. 
Also, Franklin Art Glass has your paints that they sell. They're up in Ohio. And um, I and we have some we have some videos on that. And, yeah, and we have videos. Yeah, and the videos, uh, the spelling, the correct spelling. Is the right. correct spelling is on. If I had a bottle in front of me, uh, I would be. We have some videos on glass painting. If you go there, you'll see what kind of paints. But I do want to say, if you don't have a kiln, uh, I had a question come up about some paints on here. And I believe the, the some of these paints are oven fired. Yeah. And they're not going to be permanent, but they would be good for practice to see if it's something you want to do. Right. Practice with those of, oven fired sure. paints. And then when you're ready to move on and get a more professional application, <clears throat> buy yourself a kiln. Yeah, because keep in mind, the, the one thing that uh, with the enamel paints that we use, the crushed, uh, the glass, powdered glass paints we use, is once you put them on, then you scratch off what you don't want fired. And I'm not sure if those paints that are fired in the oven do that. I don't know. Or you know. can take it off. Have... If you have to be really perfect with your st brush stroke the first time with the oven paints, it's going to probably take the fun out of painting, I think, but I, I don't, don't know, know. I don't but know. it might be something to learn on. Like uh, we, we have never used those oven uh, fired paints. No. Uh, we use the permanent paints. I did have a question. Another person had a question on here about what did I, we think of another paint. It started with a P. I'm, I'm looking for the question. I can't find uh, it right now, but we don't know because we've never tried it. Yeah. We're, we're not going to prom promote something to you that we've never tried. And so maybe some other people here have used it. Yeah, if you've it. used an oven fired paint, please chime in and give us a hand with it. Because again, that's something that Barbara and I have never used. We have always used the Rocher paint. And, uh, you know, your brushes are important. You can buy sets of brushes for about $12 and you get 12 different brushes. Your most expensive brush for your painting is going to be your badger hair brush. And, um, you know, I can understand that because I imagine that badger's pretty bad when you're trying to get the hair out of him. Yeah, I could. Oh, we, and you know what? We had another question about painting, Barb. And that question was, what do you think about f firing painted glass objects in a wood-fired kiln like oh, yeah. I would assume was back in the old days? Well, you're right. And, I, you know, I don't know. Barb and I were talking about this because neither one of us know what the what the atmosphere would be like inside that chamber with a wood fired kiln. We really, we really don't have any idea. However, yeah, that's probably how paints were fired back in the day, especially the 13 and 1400s. Now I was in the museum of art in Philadelphia about three years ago. And I looked at some paintings from the 13 and 1400s and <laughs> I couldn't tell that they were fired in wood. I mean, they were very lustrous, weren't they, Barb? Mm -hmm. The paints were not blistered. They were they were actually done by someone quite qualified to be able to paint on glass. Yeah, so you can do it, but what you're going to have to do is some test strips. So you're just going to have to test it. You're going to have to test the colors that you want to use on the glass you want to use in the wood. So the, it might make some really interesting things because I don't know anybody else that's doing it. Yeah, that. and you may, uh, it's like one time, you know, back when when we, Barbara and I used to do ceramics with our son, we used to do pot, not ceramic, well, pottery. We used to throw pots and everything. But we used well, to do, we, we used to do this process called raku, and it's an awesome process. But we went across the street to the tobacco warehouse and we swept up the leaves on the floor and we raccooed with tobacco leaves. and for that pottery that was in that raku uh, firing in that chamber, we put those tobacco leaves in there and it came out with the most unbelievable red Chinese red iridescent finish on the clay. That was just unbelievable. Wasn't it Barb? Yes, it was. So that kind of tells you different, uh, you know, different woods in that atmosphere, you know, Oak, uh, pecan, pine they could all produce a different different atmosphere and it may just do something crazy to the glass that you like along with make the paints melt into the surface so go yeah, for it go for it i say go because <laughs> we want to know how your wood fire kiln works yeah let us know let us know 
And so Magali has a window and she had the question about, um, what do you hang it with? Yeah. If you don't want to use wood, you know, what would you use? And then she had a question. She has a window panel that is 18 inches wide by 40 inches long and it's framed with zinc. And do we recommend that she change that? Well, you, you, it's a copper foil, correct? But, yeah, but yes. you don't have to change the zinc around it, Magali. You really should just put a wooden frame around, around the, the zinc. zinc. Because the zinc, you always need, y'all don't, don't misunderstand me. You always need something on the outside of your windows, but the wood will go right over right. the edge. You can't right. move it without something being, you know. Even that with other copper foil, they need something around that edge. You shouldn't put that. Uh, you shouldn't expose the foil on the edge to, to the anything. Elements. Yeah, I mean, to you anything. need that. You need that on the outside but, edge. So what we do is we frame ours in lead. Three eighths flat. Eight and then we, we use. frame it in uh, in wood. In wood, and we've never had a problem, but that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do, and it's not saying. And that, I wouldn't change out that zinc. No, don't take the zinc off, Magali. But oh, Magali, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Just add wood to it, hon. If you're if you're not feeling so sure about it, because the wood, the gap in the wood is made to fit over these products. So. Okay, Melanie's here. It's so good to see you, Melanie, hey, or Mel. hear you, or know that you're here it's a really really good we've uh um we missed you yeah we missed you I hadn't seen you in a while and so dr roy said he's from uh where'd you say oh chihuahua mexico hey all never right. been there but it sounds welcome fun. to the rdrv channel doctor uh what do you oh and this is the name of the paint p-e-b-e-o pebio paint um so Coco asked about that and Magali answered that question and she uses it to decorate her glass. Okay. So there you go. There you go. It's probably a low fire, maybe 350, 400 degrees. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with using paints different than what Barbara not used. Okay. Zinc comes in different profiles. Uh, Cat St. Jane says some is pretty strong, but you can't bend it like a circle. That's right. And you can't bend wood like a circle either. Mm -mm. So uh, <laughs> if you're going to make a circle, you're going to have to have something. If you need something with an arch in it, you're going to have to make a rectangle frame and put the arch in the glass itself. So. Yeah, that, that, that presents all kinds of problems. And I'll tell you a secret Lead about works, church windows. They're all rectangles, but if you put an arch in the top of them, when the people sit down in the church, the windows look taller. Ray's here. Hi, Ray. Ray. Hey. Um, and let's see, Vicki G is here. Uh, any, now you guys holler at me if I miss, if I skip over your questions, because it's a lot of questions coming in and well, there's Barb, a lot well, of people here tonight and uh, it's fun. It's awesome. So while Barb's looking up that question, I want to take a minute from Barb and I and sincerely thank you, Ray, for the package we received in the mail on. I want you to know it got here Saturday and... The package was opened. Of course, what you sent was still inside. However, I'm guessing that the UPS guy might have been listening to our music. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ray. We Thank appreciate you, Ray. that. We're putting it in the CD player tomorrow when we get in here and soon start we, work. Yeah, as soon as we get in here and get to Can't work, wait. we're going to crank up the CD player and listen to it. Thank, you, Thank so you so much. much. You made our day. Yeah, you really <laughs> did, Ray. That's awesome. Um, any tips? Uh, Vicki has a question. She's loving Monday nights now and she's tuning in. And do we have any tips on repeating geometric patterns accurately? I'm thinking of the window you had displayed a few weeks back. It had concave diamonds and longer hexagons. So if you're doing um, a window, the repeated pattern, is that what you're talking about? Geometric Repeated patterns? Well, of course, There's, you know me. I'm going to go back to make sure your cutting skills are up to par. Make sure that your pattern is correct. Uh, tips on making repeating geometric patterns accurately. Um, when you do yours, you... Um, measure you i i you know i i use a measuring tape when i'm stripping out my glass 
So if I need a three inch strip, you know, I use a measuring tape mark it on top and bottom. And then I, I do that. And then I'll take my pattern and I'll make sure. But if you're going to repeat a window, like going around a room or maybe a sunroom or something like that, um, the, the first thing you want to do is say it's four windows. You want to cut all four windows out at one time and then stack them. And uh, while you're cutting them, you're cutting those pieces of glass when they're stacked on top of each other should be identical, plus or minus a couple hundredths of an inch. But um, to repeat a stain, uh, a geometric pattern, you really, sh you know, you can, you don't have to, you can do rights and lefts, I guess, by flipping your pattern over. But I don't know that. Uh, we don't need to, you know, go. Yes. Yeah, so we have a, um, so we have a lot of talk about the stained glass, um, Pebio Vitria 160 glass paint. Um, and of course you all know that's not a permanent paint and I'm sure it adds a lot to your work I'm and sure that kind of thing. And Magali said it doesn't come off real easy, but you can scrape it off with a uh, razor blade. Right. Well, make so, sure, Magali, yeah. if you're going to scrape it off with a razor blade, wet it first so you don't scratch the glass underneath. Yeah. Wet your glass first before you put a razor blade to it, and that'll keep you from scratching your glass. If you've ever done that on your windows, you'll never forget it. Yeah. If you've ever made the mistake of <laughs> scratching something, scratching something, and not <clears throat> wetting it. So, um, yeah. So I hope that that helps you. Uh, what kiln, CM wants to know, what kiln would you recommend for a first timer? Uh, for a first timer, the uh, Paragon and uh, Paragon makes a small kiln. It is, uh, I want to say the chamber is 10 by 10 by four or 10 by 10 by five. It's a, or maybe, yeah, it's, we call ours Bam Bam. It's the smallest kiln that we have. And we have had that kiln for 31 years. And just last year, I changed out a heating element in it. So, mm -hmm. uh, but the Paragon, the small Paragon kiln, we've never tried a, like a microwave kiln or anything like that. I don't, matter of fact, I don't think you could fire paints in that anyway. However, the small kiln that Paragon makes is really a nice little kiln. It's 110. So you can plug it in the bathroom if you want to and, uh, you know, not worry about tripping breakers. The one thing you want to be sure of is if you're going to be firing, you just want to, you want to fire your kiln first with something else in it, different type of glass and learn your temperatures uh, with your kiln. It does, this doesn't have a kiln sitter on it and all that. So it's, it's basically operated by hand. Um, the next size up kiln is probably going to run you about $1,800, but it has, you know, the controller and everything on it. And you can, but that's not a beginner, but that's not a beginner kiln. The little kiln that we use is a Paragon and it's the smallest kiln they make. And we love it. Tabletop kiln. It's a tabletop Don't get a microwave kiln. You'll grow out of it too fast. Unless you're doing beads. That, it's good for beads. Right. But a little tabletop kiln will do a lot of things. And then the next size up would be, uh, the kiln that Christy has is, and um, she loves her kiln. Yeah, Christy. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because see, the Christy's kiln we had. Uh, okay. That kiln has the has the parameter. It has the the everything on it. Just plug it in. It's a plug and go, I guess. But Christy's been doing a lot of work with it. She got herself published in a magazine in Wilmington. So yeah, I awesome. I need a copy of that magazine. Christy, can you mail us a copy of that magazine, please? I'd love to see it. And we'd love to show everybody online. Um, yeah, the, everyone would love to see it. They really would. Uh, Rochelle says that she uses cutter cutters mate with a strip bar and angles for a perfect reproduction over and over and over on repeating pattern. But, but what? Nope. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, no, I was going to say, you know, um, a long time ago, we had uh, we had the Morton system in our yeah, shop. Yeah, that's they still sell that, and they still sell that Morton system. And if you want to reproduce something, 
identical where your angle is set up on one end to the other and you don't have to touch it. You just have to slide the glass like that. The Morton system, y'all, if you can find it, it's still for sale. And it is a really awesome piece of equipment for your studio. So Rochelle uses cutters made. So that's basically, it's the, basically same. the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's um, just probably the yeah. second version of it. It is. It is. And um, okay. Let me make sure I got that. Thanks y'all. I will try. Okay. Or just send us a picture of it. Take a picture with your, with your uh, camera and send us a picture. And then I can just put it up on the, uh, on the next live stream and we can look at it and say yeah. how be beautiful. awesome. Yeah, show I can't us. wait to see it. Yeah, we really can't wait to see it. It's always good for us when our peeps do well for themselves. I mean, yeah, it's just it's awesome. Exciting. It, really, it is. really is exciting. Thomas says he uses the Morton portable glass shop. And isn't Thomas, it's awesome, right? <laughs> yeah, we, it's great. We, we, we have bits encouraged our students to buy that because it really is a, a time saver. Well, and I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe Ray does it too, because, you know, he makes lamps and he makes panels that have to be identical. So maybe Ray, do you, can you chime in on that a little bit for us? Do you use a, the Morton system portable glass shop or one of the portable glass shops cutter to mates. create your cutter mate to create your angles? So anyway, just a quick question. I don't want to put you on the spot, Ray. <laughs> okay. Have I got all your questions? And you had a few, right? Well, I got one of... Uh, I guess it's a, a new subscriber here and uh, a, just a customer that wanted to know what kind of glue chipping glue we use. And it's called Animal Hide Glue. And if you go to our website at ConwayGlass.com and scroll down to the tools and supplies page, click on that. It'll get you right over to it and you can purchase a bag and we'll be happy to get it shipped out for you. They come in one pound bags. The directions are, are in the bag. Follow them to the T and you're on your way. Okay. So um, thank you. Yeah. The glue, the glue the, chipping glue, right? Yeah. yeah. It's called uh, animal high glue and you'll be easy to find. Now, did yeah. you have any more questions in your stack of stuff? I did not actually. Okay. That's great. That's okay. Um, so I guess what we could do is a demo. Oh, you wanted to show them the restrip? Yeah, are we doing glass chat now? Oh, I'm I don't sorry. know. Are we? I'm sorry. Let's. I think we'll hold up. Let's get some more questions in, Barb. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, whoa. Where'd that go? Okay. Uh, Ray has a Morton system, okay. and they are awesome. Yeah, the Morton system, y'all. Uh, that's a syst that that's one that we can tell you it's definitely worth the money to purchase. It is. It is. And the other one that's that's out there is probably just as good. But if you've got to do production or reproduction of several pieces that need to be three inches at the bottom, an inch and a quarter at the top on a 12 degree angle, you know, the angle works itself out according to the height of the glass anyway. Mm -hmm. So but if you need to reproduce that, that Morton system, you can just slide the glass over with whack, whack, whack. You can knock it out once you set it up. Takes a few minutes to set it up, and I'm sure Ray will attest to that. However, once it's set up, you're on go. Okay. So, um, Magali, she has a, uh, can I use any stained glass for a backsplash? Not doing mosaic, still using grout, but bigger pieces of stained glass. I don't see why not, Magali. I would uh, probably, you know, uh, seam the edges so that they're kind of rounded, which you can use a, uh, you know, not, not just sandpaper. You're probably going to need to use some sort of a sander. And then when grout lines go in, it'll, it'll look really pretty, but yes, you can use stained glass for, for your backsplash. I don't see why not. Definitely. We've we, done them. We've done them. We, we did a whole, did a, a cool whole section of waves. Cresting she's doing with waves pool balls. Too. That's cool. We crested waves. And then inside the, the curl of the wave, was the pool ball, as in pool table ball. So we hand painted and fired the pool table balls, and then we uh, mosaic the wall around the pool table. Okay, Ray, he's so excited today. He couldn't wait to tell us. Uh, he just got a job today making a stained glass clock, 24 inches in diameter, 
for a Mexican restaurant, El Paso. Congratulations. Awesome, that sounds Ray. like fun. Congratulations, man. You know, it's, and you know what? I don't know how many people go in that restaurant at night, but they're going to see that forever. And they're all going to want and one. They're all going to want <laughs> one. Get your Morton system out. Um, yeah, Magali, go ahead with that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I would. I'd, I'd, I'd roll with it because you just use the regular tile glue on the glass. It's not going to hurt it. Just treat it like, uh, like it was ceramic. Tile. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit thinner, so it's, it's not going to, you know, ceramic tile has, you have a little bit of give. So you want to make sure that wall is nice and flat and yes. sand it well. Cause it's. Yeah. Nice and flat. Cause you know, your glass isn't going to, it's going to be like, gonna, tile. It, you know, tile. It's not going to bend. That's for right. Sure. Okay. Congratulations on that job, Ray. Yeah. Congratulations. That's awesome. All right. I had something I was going to. Oh, wait a minute. The cutter's mate has a four pound handle on it. You just guide the cutter. Um, and, and she, um, Rochelle says she has arthritis in her wrist and she can cut for hours. That is awesome. We might need one of those one day. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. I, I've I've never seen that, but thanks for sharing that. Well, Maybe. that would be about what you, about the amount of pressure you put on your glass cutter anyway, four yeah, to six just pounds that of square inch. Yeah, weight and cut it. Awesome. I that like is it. that is like awesome. That. I'm gonna um, have to look into that. Okay. Johan Johan asked. Can I redo copper patina using steel, steel wool to remove? Yes. You should be able to steel wool it right off. I would think because it's only a surface acid. It doesn't like bear down inside the solder because your, your solder, when you solder in it, it's a solid stream. It doesn't have any pores in it any longer. So the question was, can they, can they, um, yeah, change I would, it. I would, you know what I would do? I would put two pieces of glass together, solder it, put copper patina on it, clean it up, and then steel wool it off and black patina it and see what happens. Because I, I, I don't use copper patina, so I wouldn't even know if taking it off and putting black patina on it would work. I'm guessing, yes, it will work, but I would try it on something. I tried on something I wasn't going to sell or or give us a gift or keep, <laughs> you know, just do a, a trial thing. Yeah. That always helps. Keeps you out of trouble. Well, it does always help and it, it will keep you out of trouble. And uh, let's see, we have some more questions. Do I need to paint the back of the glass so I don't see the thin set? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't use transparent glass. I just use opals. No, nah, we've used transparent glass on mosaic tables and, restaurants and bars before but what we did is we we uh, glued we we glued aluminum we spray adhesive aluminum foil to the top of the table and then we put the glass on top of it but again Magali we were only using pieces of glass this big so it really yeah you and know, I don't know if that's going to hold up in a bathroom. Hey, but if you table. use the right kind of trial, Magali, that might leave a nice pattern on a piece of transparent glass. Think about that. Yeah, you could. I mean, because it, it may leave you a, a nice pattern that you want to look at. But I don't recommend it. I would use all opaque glass if you can. Okay. Um, I got, we got some exciting stuff going on here. And I'm going to tell you in just a minute because... I'm going to hold that, Vicki, uh, what you just said. I don't want Ed to see it right now. He's got a question. I can't see that far <laughs> anyway. I'm kind of. Because that, that's exciting, <clears throat> Vicki. Um, Dr. Roy, where to buy stained glass supplies at El Paso, Texas, and where to buy not expensive glass because I'm starting? Okay, Dr. Roy, since you're just starting, my suggestion would be to purchase or go buy a glass, a regular glass shop and have, let see if they'll give you their cutoffs or their scrap eighth inch window glass. It's a great glass to learn how to cut on. And I don't, I don't know of, of any stained glass shops in El Paso, but I haven't looked for any. So, um, but if you're close to it, I would say, yeah, El Paso uh, would probably be 
you know, they may very well have. Uh, and then look, because Spectrum Glass is now in Mexico, Dr. Roy. So there should be some outlets there for their glass too. But Spectrum has moved to Mexico and uh, see, I, I don't know, they may even have a retail shop set up down there, Dr. Roy. You may have to look into that. But I would use window glass starting out and learning the process because cutting is key. Fabrication is second, but cutting is key. Okay. Vicki G says, hey, Ed, you mentioned wanting to work with Derek Hunt. He's doing a workshop at Corning on 714. You know and what? Gone to Guess what? <laughs> I'm going to book that class tonight. Tonight. When I get home, I'm we're going to see Derek. We'll, if I don't we can know get if we'll in, take because the motor we're home. telling everybody, everybody else is going to sign up, and there won't be any room. <laughs> That's okay. Maybe it's like glass blowing. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully he takes he he's taken uh uh. I don't know what. What are you thinking? He's about? taking intermediate or advanced students. <laughs> Okay, so that should be that should be good. We will check that out. I we've got to go to Corning to do some research in the library there, and so uh, I've been talking to them. Wow, and, what a great trip for us! So and it's in awesome. July. Is that yeah, when that July is? July fourteenth. Mm -hmm. July fourteenth. Thank you, Vicky. I appreciate that. We'll try to get in that class. And you're life. right. I I would like to work with Derek Hunt, and I, I I mean I would even go as far as going to the UK to work with him. Okay, I, I saw a weird. I saw a uh, somebody. Uh, Jupiter, somebody said they could use plutonium for a frame. I, I, I don't know what he's talking about, <laughs> but anyway, um, kryptonite, kryptonite, <laughs> uh, Aries turned out blotchy and I don't know like how it looks. I understand on the, on the copper patina, I, I guess that's what that question is. It's hard to keep up, but, but you it, guys are. Let's let's reiterate about using patinas, though, y'all. Finish your window. Clean the window with baking soda and water. You have to neutralize your flux. And you don't have to scrub it. No, you just you have just to wash it. You just need to wash it. Don't be scrubbing your copper foil. And don't do any be, patining until you do that. I'm sorry, Barb. Finish up. Because I've seen a lot of people say, I scrubbed it. Well, your copper... Your copper foil is stuck on there and adding scrubbing it is just going to loosen up your, yeah. your foil. So don't do that. Just gently wash it and then use the, the baking soda. Baking soda and water will break the acid down without even rubbing it. You just want to clean it, clean it good, and then apply your patina, y'all. And and if again, and we'll and we'll reiterate again, if you're if you're too tired to finish the window before you're done with, before you you go to bed, then don't start soldering it. When you start soldering is when you need to completely finish everything. Right. Or you should anyway. Because I, I, cleaning up after a mess that you left the night before is not the way to go. Okay. Scott is from Olympia, Washington, and he's doing copper foil window. 57 inches by 27 inches, and it will sit inside a window frame, and he's using restrip. Uh, three across and three vertical. Is rebar needed for extra support using uh, zinc came, I would imagine, around the outside edge? I would say absolutely not. If you're using the restrip, yeah, yeah. You're, you're really good. And, you know, the placement of the restrip. You did a good job on that. Is to keep the window from doing this or doing this. So if you can run vertical mm -hmm. and you can run horizontal, you're good gonna planning. you're gonna eliminate that. Yeah, good what planning. It, good planning in the design too. And then it going into a window further stabilize stabilize. Yeah, when you have that molding around all four sides, and maybe it's biting say three eighths of or even an inch around it, it's very very rigid. That window mm -hmm. is good to go. And yeah, so good idea, good. great planning on your behalf. And keep in mind that restrip that Scott's using can also be used in the lead. It fits right in the channel of the lead. So keep that in mind. If you don't want to exposed rebars, use restrip in the lead and then, you know, put your glass together just like normal. And then when you putty it, that restrip is going to get locked in and that lead won't bend forwards or backwards. 
Okay, I think I'm missing some some things going on here. <clears throat> um, yeah, so the great great question and uh, good answer, Ed. Thank you. So I, think I, I'm, I was going to say I think I'm going to message Derek tonight and tell him I want to be in his class. No, you just go <laughs> on this morning site and sign up, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm ready. <laughs> So we need an ex. Uh, uh, a I'll be ready for a vacation in July anyway. Right. That's right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set you up for a glass chat. Uh oh. Are we ready? Or you want to do a demo or a glass chat? Let's do a glass chat because I got some things I want to talk to him about. Okay. It's going to talk to you about a few things. So listen up, everybody. No, listen I'm just up. kidding. Listen up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know better than that. Right. Okay. Okay. What you got for us? So here, here are my hands. Oh, 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 let's get you on here. There's my hands. Yeah. Okay, everything's looking good. Yeah. I had a pedicure yep. and a manicure. <laughs> so anyway, tonight, y'all, thank you for tuning in tonight. So uh, I think I have my bearings right on the camera that's on my hand so I can look at you in the eye and talk to you about this. If you, <clears throat> excuse me. If you remember last week, we talked about zinc and why it doesn't hold your patina, why it's, you know, why it's, why it pits, it oxidizes. It just does so many different things. Even though it's a very nice uh, metal to use for stained glass. However, so let me show you. I, I, I told you all I've had zinc. And so I want to show you. This is the back side of the zinc. This is the way it came yeah, out of the box. That's good. You can see it. Yeah. So this is the way it came out of the box. Okay. So what did I do? I took steel wool. And I steel wooled about a five inch section of it on the other side. And then I cleaned it. And I patinaed it with black patina. So now I want to show you, this is the black patina on a steel wool piece of zinc. It held up quite well. This spotty look here, blotchy, spotty, this look, oh, can you down where? Right there. Right there. Yeah, you okay. can see. Mm -hmm is not steel wool. So I want, so, you know, you, you've got to steel wool it, but I want you to keep in mind because this is a metal, okay, that when they're extruding this, they start out with a flat stock. And I'm not sure if you can see that. It's I'm going to hold it still. Focus. Hold on. There, there it is right there. Yeah. So anyway, I want you to see, if I, if I opened this piece of zinc up, okay, it would be about an inch and an eighth wide. And then they run this through an extruder. That extruder has to be lubricated somehow. So a lot of the problems with you not getting anything to stink, stick to zinc, stink to zinc. <laughs> stink to zinc. A lot of people stink to zinc. But you don't want to, this has got an oil on it from the manufacturing process. That has to be cleaned. Yeah, nothing will stick to that. Nothing will stick to that, period. But if you clean it with, that's cleaned with um, steel wool, y'all. Look at that. And I didn't do anything else to it. And I think last week someone said they use gun metal blue, gun bluing to uh, Same thing. Susan's do your zinc. That looks just like gun metal blue. I told Barbara, I was like, wow, that is really how close that really is. But if you clean this up with steel wool, I believe you'll get that look that you want around the outside of your small windows. So that's that with the zinc. Bending zinc is really hard. And I showed you last week about the zinc bender, the cane bender. Okay. And you can't just bend it in one place if you're going to try and bend it by hand. You're going to have to use your fingers and spread them out. And you can get a circle out of this, but it's going to crimp inside uh, and can you get a circle with the cane bender oh the only as small as the cane bender diameter of the wheel which is two oh, inches okay okay right. so my suggestion let me get back on 
would be to use uh, your okay. zinc everywhere. We'll back up. But if you need to make a small jewel, I got that. Oh, okay. If you need to make a small jewel uh, bend, I would use lead and just, you know, if, if you have to, I, I don't know too many windows that are built out of zinc completely. Um, they were built in the transoms of storefronts in downtowns in the 30s and 40s because Barbara and I have restored quite a few of those windows. And we put them back in with zinc and uh, yeah. and they're still there. I mean, they're they're still there. We can go Thomas downtown Shaw. and get lots of yeah. pictures of them. Yeah, you can bend wood, Thomas. I'm. Thomas said he uh, can bend. He's bent wood. Oh yeah, I'm sure you can. You can steam it and do a lot of things with it. And uh, you know? yeah, but um, it takes a long time to get a circle out of a piece of wood. Yeah, but you know what? But you can do it. The other thing is, is you can buy round oak frames and they come in uh 16 18 24 and 36 inch diameters but, but so sometimes people want a 48 inch circle right the other problem with circles is hanging them if they're in a wood frame you know how do you hang them and make them look great because they always tend to want to do this yeah they tend to want to do that so but anyway, so our second half of glass chat tonight y'all okay. is something that we've been talking about Tonight. Tonight. And it is so ironic. You guys, all of you out there in YouTube on our channel must have uh, telepathy because you knew yes. that I was going to talk about restrip tonight, y'all. Okay. So restrip, yeah. copper restrip. Okay. There's the bag it comes in. It's a product made by guess who? Cascade Metals, one of my favorites. So it's cascade metals. They come in 25 foot spools and this can be used in lead or copper foil. Again, Barbara and I prefer to use seven thirty seconds black back copper foil made by venture. And we also want to be able to, with this, I want, I want you to see, I'm just going to, I'm just going to take it and just bend it a little bit just to show you how easy it bends. And here's another little bend right here. Y'all, you can put this all through your stained glass window. Try and make it run as long vertically as you can and as long horizontally as you can. Your solder goes right over top of it. The glass goes right up against it. And you don't have to take any more off of your glass to use the restrip. So just a quick little thank you all for bringing up the restrip so that Ed and Barb could show it to you tonight here on the RDRV channel. That was it. Um, thank you, Ed. Yeah, everybody use that if you have any questions about the stability of your stained glass windows. Yeah, That's and a good if you're... Product. And, I, and I put that link to that particular product in the description of the uh, live stream tonight so you could take a look at it and see if that's what and 25 you foot of it is a lot. Yes. So... So it is uh, a great thing to use, though. Uh, Christy wants to know what kind of wood do you use for your frames, and do you buy pre-made frames or make your own? I, Christy, hey, <laughs> I make the frames, but I buy the wood already rabbited down the center, sanded and smooth, and I buy it from Franklin Art Glass. It's it's oak wood. It comes in six foot lengths. Six foot lengths is a good length because of shipping. If you get into eight foot, it goes to a whole other conveyor and UPS loves you for that one. <laughs> so do the six foot lengths. Um, and we do have a video on, it's called Framing It or Let's Frame It. And um, it's probably one of the first 10 or 12 videos that we did. And, um, but it's a good video. It shows you the tools we use to miter, shows you the saw we use, and it shows you the little corner things that we have purchased to make sure that when we drill our miters, we drill our holes in the frames, the frames line up perfectly and are perfectly smooth in each corner. And then you screw those frames together from the side. Never the top, because you're hanging top. from the top. So you screw them together from the side, and then when they hang from the top. And glue them. And glue them. You'll yeah. never, they'll never come apart. 
And you know what? You You'll can sleep it. good at night worrying yeah, about it. Yeah, customers will love it too. It just adds a, and you, you're going to have to charge a little bit extra for it. So maybe that's an extra service well, we charge that you could, yeah, that you could offer your customers. Say, hey, this really looks good. We can you know, frame it. We can and we, frame it. And we charge just, $7 a foot for it. Yeah, $7. And that includes your laborers screwing it and gluing it together. So, and guess what? You're making money. That's $7 yeah. a foot. Um, not a lot, but you're making money. You're not losing money. Okay. So Mary says she's <laughs> going to Kokomo on uh, Wednesday. Great. Say hi to John time. for us. Yeah. For the first time. And she's going to buy 32 by 32 inch sheets and was thinking about building an A-frame to fit in the SUV to lay the glass against versus a box. Any, a box. Any travel tips? Travel tips for you because you're going somewhere that's just going to astound you when you get there. Um, and please do say hello to John uh, in the warehouse from Ed and Barb. And, uh, but yeah, so if you're going to build an A-frame rack, I think that's a great idea because what you want to do, you y'all, you never want to travel with your glass flat. Glass is strong, vertical. And if you're going to build a little A-frame, yeah, just put it on a little bit of a, of a angle, maybe 12 to 15 degrees, not much. And then have a uh, cut a piece of, of uh, wood to fit on both sides of it. So that once you put your stack, your glass on the rack, put the wood in front of it, and then you can tie, tie that down because you won't be tying against the glass. You'll just be tying against the, the wood itself. So <clears throat> watch your headline. Travel vertical. Watch your headliner on the way in. <laughs> yeah. And if you've got an SUV, 32 inch sheets, you're going to be right at your headliner when you're yeah. going in. Once you get beyond the, where the door opens, you're going to have, you know, four or five inches above you. But definitely store, uh, travel with it vertical. And um, if you can, put, um, put two pieces of flat wood at the very end of your rack facing the front seat. If you have to shut that thing down in the middle of the highway, you don't want glass coming to the front seat through the other seats. A pickup truck might be safer. Pickup would be safer, yeah. And you wouldn't have to worry about the interior of your SUV. And your rack, you you know, when you're building the rack to fit in the back of the SUV, you got to make sure it's, it's going to fit because it's going to be sitting up. Right. And then your glass, so... I don't know how much headroom. I don't know either, it's but if, tight fit. if you know, if you're, you know, you're going to Kokomo, you may even be able to purchase a crate when you get there. Yeah. But that would be tough to get into an SUV. Right. But I was saying if you, if you, if you back up and use a, a pickup truck, take it with you and take a, 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 you know, strappy cord, you can put the crate up against the back of the tailgate facing the cab and strap it right through the, st the strap links in the back of the pickup oh, truck yeah. and go on. We, we've crate, done that. That would be awesome. Yeah. And Kokomo may sell you a crate. It's probably $35, but it's a crate. And you wouldn't have to build a rack. You could just put that uh, in the back of your truck, like Ed yeah. said. Put the crate right in the back of your truck. Right up against the, the cab of the truck. The cab. And then strap it in and go on back and then to the house. Light Loose light your glass in and yeah. then with you're paper good to in go. between them and a little bit of styrofoam in there to keep it from yeah. bouncing around and you're good to go. Yeah. I wish I was going. I know, you know, we used to do day trips. We would drive 230 miles to pick up glass, spend three or four hours with our with our supplier, have a good time and drive three or four hours coming back the same day. That was a whirlwind tour. Yeah, but it was fun. Looking at all the glass. Oh my gosh. You're lucky. And you're just going to you're just going to one American manufacturer. Yeah. Just think. Just go to Kokomo. I mean, we we've been wanting to go to Kokomo for a while. I've been talking to John for a long time. And yeah. Of course, we got we got an invitation, a standing invitation for the Paul Wismack Corporation to uh, go to Wismack and and take the grand tour. So okay. So um Let's see. Okay. If you have to lay, okay. I, I feel like I'm skipping some questions here. Um, Thomas said he's made frames out of PVC pipe and fittings. That's interesting, Thomas. 
not sure how that works, but send us a photo. And once you glue it together, it definitely it's is not, not coming going apart. Anywhere, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have some good ideas here. Okay. So what if Magali says, what if you have to lay your glass down? How would you recommend to do that? Well, Magali, you're going to Yakagani this summer, aren't you? And uh, you're going to find that Yakagani sheets are about 20, 20 by 28, thereabouts. Is she going to Yakagani or Oroboros? She's going okay. to Yakagani. And um, I think she's going to Yakagani. But anyway, if you need to lay it flat, really, you know, if you could take, like, since you're traveling, if you could take two suitcases on top of each other and then put the glass laying right up against it where it can't slide yeah, out from that, the bottom. Yeah, but then when they're moving around, uh, I would suggest cutting it in half. Yeah, make one. it as small as you can get away with it, and yeah, it'll be much easier to handle for you, especially since you're going on vacation. Yeah, I would I would put it in a place you don't have to move it. Right. You don't want to shuffle it around. Yeah, and you don't want Abigail trying to fool around, you know, getting hurt with it or anything. She doesn't so. have a place to stand it up. So um I would cut it cut those sheets in half. Have them cut those sheets in half, or you can. Um I'm trying to think of the best way to do that, Magali, because I don't want you to lose any of it coming back, you know. Um it's not the fact that laying it flat hurts it. It's the fact that you've laid it flat and now you've got more weight on top of it. And every time you hit a bump, you know. So if you've only got a 20, what size are those sheets? I think they're like 18 by 24. Or they're, they're oh, they're 18 by 24? Four oh. and a half pounds, maybe six pounds. A you lot can of get away with cutting them in half and have a piece of wood in your trunk. You'd be okay if you had that, you know, stable in the back of your car. Yeah, and you you could always put a sheet, bubble wrap, a sheet, bubble wrap, a sheet, bubble. Well, you don't want them scratched anyway, so you're going to put something in between them. But if you could put the small bubble, bubble wrap in between the them. real small. Stuff. The real small, like the quarter inch bubble. And uh, do that, Magali. I think you'd be safe uh, throughout your travels. Good luck, Magali, and uh, let us know how that trip works out. We'd love to see the the things that you make with that. Beautiful or you can glass. have it shipped here and stop by and pick it up on your way home. Yeah. You can put it between furniture blankets, but yeah. it's going to be hard to. Yeah. Every time you use something thicker, it's going to get, you're not going to get much glass in there, <laughs> you could... but you could use the glass bubble wrap and then put it in a moving and blanket and moving tape it with packing and tape. tape. Packing. Oh, that's a good idea. Tape it with packing tape to keep it from sliding around. Sure. After you get it not. stacked up, put a furniture blanket around it and uh, yeah, take yeah. it up and uh, you'll be good to go. You'll be okay. You'll be yeah. fine. It's just, you know what? The longest part of your trip will be packing your glass to make it safe for the ride. Yeah. Okay. So that's awesome. Yes. So we got, we got, we've got our friends are going to Kokomo. we got our friends going to Europe boroughs on their way to Canada. We're going to go to Corning. Hey, we're all making trips. One day we'll all meet up together and go yeah. somewhere. We'll let you know next week if we got signed up for Corning or not. Yeah, we'll see if there's any Go ahead, pay that bill left. tonight and make sure that nobody gets in ahead of us. Oh, and <laughs> you announce it and they're going to all go. Um, Joan says she uses carpet uh, and cut sheets in half and she goes to Wismac. And there's a lot of people. Um, Joan is two and a half hours away from uh, Wismac. And Mary is also. Oh, oh. Mary. Okay, Joan's in, Joan's in Maryland, right? Isn't she in Maryland? She in Maryland? Oh. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I don't remember. Because that's where my cousin lives, in the, that, the Maryland side of West Virginia. Okay, so I think we're going to go to a demo, maybe? Yeah, I guess. We're, you know what, Barb? We're because kind of late. But I we'll just really again. want to say hi to Frank, our neighbor, and his family oh, yeah, for watching Frank. tonight. Thanks Frank, for what? <laughs> thank you all for tuning in tonight. It's awesome. And thanks, hey, glad we stopped by to see you on the way to the shop tonight because uh, your RV guy is awesome. So yeah. we're happy to have a portable RV mechanic. And uh, not that there's anything wrong with our RV. We want to get the we want to get the motor changed in the awning. So, but anyway, thanks for tuning turning us on to that. Hugs to those beautiful children you got, Frank, and your wife. Good to see y'all. Thanks for tuning in tonight.
but we're not leaving. We're not leaving. We're not leaving. Ed's going to do a demo. And this is, again, this is for newbies. Yeah, this, this is for newbies, but we like to watch Ed cut glass. So, Ed. Uh, I think everybody just likes to see me work. <laughs> we do. That's awesome. Yeah, we okay. do. Okay. So, why don't you. All right. So let me let me get let me get you up on the camera. Get, I got to get on the camera. Get on the camera. How come it's not, there? You go. Okay. So uh, let me show you all. This is my glass cutter that's been in my pocket for uh, I guess about twenty years. You can see that this side here is the worn sign because I'm left-handed. The right side of my cutter head is worn. But I want to again, you know, you those of you that are just starting out with stained glass, Doctor Roy. This is for you, my friend. This is eighth inch window glass that I'm holding in my hand. And it's a, one of the softest glasses made. You can, I don't know, but I can, if you if you touch other glasses, you can feel that this glass is soft. It just feels soft. But what I want to move that up. What I want to talk to everyone about is when you're cutting patterns. I really, really, really hope that you're not trying to pull your glass cutter cutting patterns. I'm going to cut this pattern and I'm going to push it. Huh. Right off the end. So we're just going to take our finger, our two index fingers underneath the score, our thumbs on top. And we'll break it just like that. So remember, too, because <laughs> you see this. Let me show you this. You see that right there? If you're if when you're breaking this, if you don't pull down and away, you're going to pull down and stab. And you don't want to do that, even though you've got lots of Band-Aids in your workshop. We don't want to see you bleeding. So I'm going to let's show you that again. And then I'm going to show you, Dr. Roy, how to use your square. We're going to make one more score down this beautiful wavy road on our way to stained glass history. And we're going to take that again, two index fingers underneath, down and away. OK. So now. I have my square. Every tool kit should have a square in it. When you're cutting straight lines, you want to pull, pull, pull. Sounds like we're getting ready to do some skeet shooting, don't it? Anyway, and then it just is a nice break. Index finger, index finger underneath thumb break it. Okay. So you guys know that cutting the glass to me is the most important part, but it's also the most satisfying or gratifying part of working on the window other than the finished product. Because you, you test your skills every time you pick up that glass cutter and every time you pick up a pattern, you test your scut your <laughs> your gutting <laughs> skills. That's for those of us, those of you that hunt. We test your cutting skills. And remember, we can show and teach anyone to fabricate stained glass, but the cutting part is where it begins. And that, my friends, to me is the most important part of the entire process is being a really confident glass cutter. Again, this is Ed. I'm here for the glass chat, and we did our demo. Dr. Roy, I hope that helps you out. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in and making it over 5,000 subscribers for us. Yeah. We're not going anywhere, so We're don't go away. We're not going anywhere. Um, Ed, you. That's right. You know what time it is. It's time for those of you in the wings to, to go subscribe. ahead and subscribe to us, please. Don't forget to subscribe. And, you know, when you get done with that, there's a bell at the top. I want you to click on that bell. And that's your notification button. 
Once you click on that, you will be notified every time we have a new video or every Monday night that we have a 7 p.m. live, which you know is very consistent. It's every Monday night at 7 p.m. So we look forward to your subscription. We look forward to you ringing the bell. And giving us a thumbs up. And we look up. forward to thumbs up because why? Because that's our favorite finger, everybody. So, um, yeah. yeah, thank you, guys. We appreciate Thank you all for it. tuning I in. I some more I mean, comments coming in. And if you have any questions, we'll hang out just a little bit longer for the questions. Um, uh, keep, it's okay, been a beautiful go. day here in South Carolina. Magali says she's going to spend a fortune on glass. Well, you know, That's what okay. else do you have all that money for? You've been saving up. Well, you know what, Magali? Here's the deal. That's why you that's why you work really hard and you go to those shows and you sell everything you make. So when you get back from your boroughs, your your customers that come visit you at the shows are going to see a difference in your work. Why? Because you're using your boroughs glass. And that is like it's a beautiful, beautiful glass. Cat St. Jane says she wants to see you. Um, they want to see you uh, break it wrong one day. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. How about right? I how about I show you what happens when you skip? Oh, my cutter's got a skip in it. I broke it wrong. You did something wrong. I did something wrong. But my cutter, what happens when you have a skip is that if it's a small skip, like less than an eighth of an, an eighth of an inch, your glass will still run by it. It's when you when you have a skip of a half inch or more that the score will will not it'll go to where it's going and then whichever side you're pulling down on the hardest it'll go to its weakest point. Its weakest point is the side that you're pulling down on the hardest. Left or right-handed, I just happen to be pulling down on my right hand that way. Yeah. And it happens, let me tell you, when he when it happens on a mirror or something like that that that's really big and it messes it up. You can't reuse it. Great demo, Ed. Thanks. No, I'm glad you enjoyed and it. And he said, wash hands. Oh, I will. Are your hands dirty? No. Not uh, you know, <laughs> Ed's hands have so many scars on them. I don't know. <laughs> Are you bleeding? Uh, who said wash hands? The doctor? Ray. Ray. No, Ray. no my hands, Ray, these hands are actually clean. <laughs> My skin is a beautiful olive tone. With a lot of scars. With a lot of scars. <laughs> because I have... Old hands. Old hands. These hands have been hit and bruised and scorned for many, many years in the glass industry. And uh, the stained glass is good for my hands. And I do have a blister there, Ray. You see that one? No, I don't oh. have it up. I don't Can have it up. That? They don't want to see that. <laughs> Well, you know, we have a little project. We do a lot of some community service. So the other day, Barbara and I were installing a little free library in a new neighborhood in our community. We, another one. We we posted the last one, but we, we just, we're, this is a brand new one that we're putting in. Our last in one another that neighborhood. we had. Yeah. Well, it's not the last. No, it's not a last library. It's the last one that we had in stock. Yeah. So we got to have more <clears> So Barbara and I get elected to go install these. And then we have this huge, well, not a huge, we just have a great, like a grand opening with cupcakes. And Dr. Kids. Seuss and, and kids. kids. And uh, it's really a fun time. And, you know, the little free libraries are all over the country. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, your glass collection is going to grow, Magali. So, yeah. Oh, it's a bad, bad, terrible, terrible thing to have. A lot of glass? Yeah. I know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and you don't want to cut it, and you just keep looking at it. Well, you oh. know, some glasses, Magali, when you um, when you just cut them <laughs> yeah, and right. stick them in the window, it's like just let's just put that in a frame, and it's yeah. done. You know, let's. And call I've that seen finished. people do that before. I have. I like to put the pretty pieces in my window. We and, bought a piece of blue and white flash glass yeah. one time. We'll do that in the studio when we get a real pretty piece of glass. We'll just put it in the window and look at it for a couple of months. Yeah, we had a piece of cobalt blue flash glass, blue and white flash glass one time. And um, the front of it was dark blue, cobalt blue. The back of it 
had a parrot turned sideways with his beak in his feathers in his back. And I, to this day, I still see that. And it was, it was picture perfect. That's how, how the glass was placed in that glass. And that's why awesome. I, I love um, looking at glass because it just sets your imagination wild. It does. It does. Okay. I think we're going to go have some supper. I think I'm going to take this bride out to get something to eat tonight. Get it's Monday supper. night. Get some supper. She had a good day at the doctor. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, her blood's red. That's good. Yeah, it's still red. It's okay, still red, guys. but we're in good shape. Okay, guys. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Oh, there was a question about the flip table. The flip table uh, is, is being coming up. Drawn. And yeah. Um, the person that's drawing it has not brought it back to us yet, but we, we, we may go ahead and release that video without the sketches and get, just give you close-ups. Yeah, because it's, it's actually quite it's simple. Easy it's to a base, out. a top, and then the pivots. So I think we can maybe get enough pictures of it for you. The tip table had... is awesome. However, we won't be giving that design away. You can purchase it, but it won't be expensive, but it, It'll because be it's our design, we yeah. will be selling that. We'll be selling it on the website, but it's simple. It's well worth the money. It's well, yeah, and it and it's not going to be so expensive that you know you got to go it's refinance. Not break it back. Right. It'll be cheap. Um, okay, am I missing anything? So that answers that question. I, and if I've missed a question, please let me know, and we'll answer it real quick. And thank you for the super chat tonight. That's yes. awesome. Oh, Scott, he has a four by six stained glass piece with. Bigfoot or bearded man on it. I won't cut it. Oh, going to frame it. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I think I would frame that too. I don't see why not, Scott. And it's just there's so many things. You know, if y'all remember when when you were young, I do, and it was this was probably one of the most one of my favorite things to do in art <laughs> class was we went outside and laid on the ground and watched the clouds. And then we would draw what we saw in the clouds. And, you know, to this day, I don't draw the clouds, but I still see things in them that just completely amaze me. So, yeah. anyway, it's, so, it's the clouds are very inspirational. y'all. I, I mean, I, th I think they are. That's just me. Okay. So, or you. Uh, or you, yeah. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next Monday night. We'll work hard to get another video out this week. Our, uh, we've got, right now we're doing inventory and redoing the, the stained back. glass yeah. shop. And, we're redoing uh, the stained glass shop so, and open, reopening the retail shop on the stained glass. So, so the retail shop will reopen in the fall. So we're um, redecorating, remodeling cleaning we're cleaning we're getting we rid have of a whole new that, product yeah, line coming new product out line. Yeah. and uh, we'll tell you all about it as we get we have some very summer. exciting things coming up so, so uh, okay so we'll let you guys go have your supper and we're going to go to supper have a good evening ray back to you buddy thumbs up and thanks again for the music we'll be listening to it at 9 a.m sharp thank you all we'll see you next good week. night everybody thanks for tuning in okay